Hey, what's up? So in this video, I will show you a different way to define trees and how that could be useful. And I will show you that we usually deal with the trees, but we don't realize it. So first thing, when you start learning about the trees or the graphs, you will start by something similar to this. So you will define a class called node. It will have a constructor, accepts a data, defines a left and a right. You will have, for example, a binary search tree class. It will have insert, insert node. And you will just give it some data and it will like arrange the tree in a specific format. So here in this example, I have, I inserted 15, minus 1, minus 50, then 100. This is how the tree will look like. Or this is like an, as, an as an object when I print it. And this is actually the visualization of that. So the root will be 15. On the right, we should have 100, and on the left, you should have minus 1. Then on the left of that, we should have minus 50. I couldn't, like, revert or, uh, yeah, I couldn't revert this or reverse this uh, graph when I build it. But this is how this binary search tree will look like. And, for example, if you want to reach this node, you need to traverse the, uh, at least part of the tree. Then, uh, then you will reach it. So that's the usual case, and it's totally fine. Uh, nothing wrong with this. But uh, usually in like front-end development, this is the way that we will define trees and we will deal with them. So this is a simplified version. So this is at my tree. It's just a plain object. And each key is the key of the node. And this key could point to anything. So in this case, we have the key one, which is the ID of the node, points to this object, which contains an array of IDs. These are the children or the nodes for this uh, node, the children nodes. So 1 points to 2, 3, 4, and 2 points to 5. And each node containing a reference to its parent. So the good thing about this kind of way to deal with trees is you can access each node in a constant time, and you can delete it in a constant time, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, so this is actually a, like a realist, much, much more realistic example. We have a tree of users. This is user number 1. This is his children and of course his parent ID is not and the same thing applies for other users and this is how this tree will look like we have one points to two three and four and two points to five so actually in, in some libraries this is called some libraries this is called normalizing the state share and I think the first one did that is ngrx from angular but in react redux we have this uh, like document, which is very interesting. I will put a link in the description uh, so you can read it. But they advise you if you're having like a nested relational data, for example, here we have post and each post containing an array of comments. Imagining in the context maybe of React, you want to loop over this, rendering it, how many, like, imagine the loop uh, nesting in this kind of example. Imagine if you want to, de to delete a specific component, you need to go to its post, then loop over its component, of loop over its comments and delete that. So if you represent this relation and nested data in a tree like this, so we have a map that each post ID points to the post itself, and inside each post we have an array of comment IDs. So each one will give us a constant time uh, to fetch that comment from another map. So yeah, that's basically it. And this is a very good way to deal with uh, data. And let me just give you a much more realistic example or much simpler example. So let's say we have like three checkboxes and we need to keep monitoring or yeah, keep monitoring which one is selected and remove the ones that are not selected. So usually what will people do, they will define a state, which is an array, and each one of them will be, or each item will be an object ID of the checkbox, let's say one. If it's selected or uh, not right so let's, let's start with this so now we have these three check boxes if I selected this one you will go over this state loop over it and mark this as true right so if I mark this one you will do the same thing you will loop and just mark this as true but if you represent this as a tree Let's say like this. So one will be false by default, two, three. Now, 
here we have a constant time of updating and deleting or actually reading so if I selected this start from the start here so if I selected this one I know it's ID I will just go here and change this to true this is uh, O of 1 and above it was O of N so I think it might be a really simple example but uh, it will make a huge difference especially when you are dealing with a huge number of data uh, in your redux state for example so my usually my uh, the way I think about it if I need to group data in a relative or that, that they are relative to each other and the order is not important I will just use a map like this so the, the axis is off one the delete is off one also the update is off one instead of keep just looping imagine if this is if this was nested for example uh, this is much more simpler but if the order is still important you can add here maybe an order so let's say two three one and this will help you to render that in the specific order you want so yeah so this is actually one way to define trees and I think this is much more efficient than this one here because you can have uh, an off and constant time reading any node if you just know the ID you don't need to traverse anything if I have the ID 5 I can immediately go there and read that object without traversing the whole tree which is uh, much more efficient so another place that we usually deal with trees but we don't realize it is database uh, for example in MongoDB uh, you will have like something like this this is your collection uh, let's, just, let's just do this says an array and uh, let's say I won't use UUID let's just to put it like this and these are the children's so and and so on I think you got the idea so in MongoDB the way you query this if I want to get this parent and all of its children in one result you will use this graph lookup aggregation query if you are you if you use MongoDB I highly recommend that you read about this it's it will simplify a lot of queries that you write so yeah that's it if you are pointing to other documents inside an array or something you can use the graph aggregation uh, lookup query which will simplify your queries but in SQL I think this is like uh, a classic example where the table referencing itself so we have here an employees table and each one of them containing ID, name, and supervisor. Supervisor will point to the same table itself, so it's one too many relationship with the, or itself one too many relationship. So each user can have, or each employee can have uh, a supervisor. So we'll start with this employee. It does, he does not have a supervisor. So we'll go to the next one. Sarah, her supervisor ID is number one, which is this guy. Now Kua will also point to this guy. Luke will point to Sarah, Smith will point to Luke. So if you want to represent this as a tree, it will be like this. So we'll start by from the words, and he is supervisor over Kua and Sarah. Sarah is supervisor over Luke. Luke is supervisor over Smith. So if I ask you to give me all the supervisor tree for Smith, so you will give me Smith, Luke, Sarah, the words, you need these four. Uh, writing this query will not be easy. But, for example, in Postgres, we have something called recursive uh, queries or recursive CTEs. I think that's the correct, uh, yes, this, this is the link. I will just, uh, yeah, it's just called recursive query, not recursive CTE. So basically, this is the way that you will search over trees in SQL if you define it in this way. Um, it's not that hard. I will put a link in the description. You can read about it. But the point is that this can, this kind of thing is existing so you might want to check it out uh, yeah i think that's it